mysterious alignment between the Great Pyramids of Giza and the stars of Orion could have been more than a coincidence. The patterns that once navigated mariners across treacherous waters now guide astronomers to uncover the mysteries that lie within the constellations. So on Earth, when we want to tell where something is, we give its coordinates in latitude and longitude. And what that means on Earth is it's a measure of, latitude is a measure of the distance between the North Pole and the South Pole, and longitude is the east-west distance, so the other direction. Similarly, we have a celestial coordinate system. But the coordinates, they're not called latitude and longitude. They're called declination and right ascension. They are just direct extensions of latitude and longitude on Earth, projected out into the sky. Peering into the Big Bang, scientists can nearly see the beginning of time, 300,000 years after the Big Bang. Even our most familiar constellations have a lot to teach us about the cosmos. Orion, which is Greek for hunter, has 77 visible stars. Alnidoc, Alnilam, and Mintaka make up the three stars in Orion's belt. In modern times, astronomers have hunted Orion, finding a variety of astonishing objects. When I see Orion, I also see the life and death of stars. Just below the belt, there's a little smudge called the Orion Nebula, and that's a nursery, a nursery for baby stars, and you can actually see that with the naked eye. Orion has also bagged a pair of stellar gems. If you look at the upper left-hand shoulder of Orion, you see the red giant Betelgeuse, and if you immediately look right down to the lower right star, the star that's sort of his, his leg, uh, you'll see the blue supergiant Rigel. Betelgeuse, as a red supergiant, is a star in its death throes. A red supergiant is a star that is actually quite a bit cooler than our sun, but much, much larger. Betelgeuse is 14 times more massive than our sun. When it runs out of nuclear fuel, Betelgeuse will become unstable and implode in a colossal supernova. It can detonate at any time. And when it explodes, it will light up the entire night sky, and it will even be visible during daytime. The supernova will draw more attention to a sky that's been captivating us for thousands of years. The ancient Egyptians consulted the heavens to tell them when to plant and when to harvest. Every star possessed a sacred meaning. They called Sirius, in the constellation Canis Major, the Star of Isis. Sirius's appearance before dawn during the summer solstice forecasted the annual rise of the Nile River. Other constellations, like Orion, might have had a certain architectural significance. Egyptologists have often asked the question, why did the ancient Egyptians build three great pyramids that are slightly misaligned? Did they have bad ruler sticks thousands of years ago? The three pyramids seem to be aligned to the three constellation stars of Orion. What does this alignment mean? Was it a coincidence, or were the pyramids intentionally engineered this way? The pyramids of Giza seduce us with archaeological mystery and historical intrigue. Some scientists think the pyramids have a certain astronomical importance. It has been claimed that the layout of the three major pyramids on the Giza Plateau, including the Great Pyramid, are set on the ground to mimic the three stars in Orion's belt. It's one of my favorite connections between events on Earth and events in the sky. But the ancient Egyptians didn't see a hunter in Orion like we do. They saw Osiris, god of rebirth. Some speculate that air shafts within the Great Pyramids were specifically designed to catapult the souls of pharaohs to the heavens. 
In those pyramids, we have two different shafts, and those shafts, one points north, one points south. The south shaft points toward Orion. So the soul of the pharaoh would be launched through that shaft in order to be connected to Osiris, Orion, and be resurrected again, enjoying eternal life. But others are a bit more skeptical. In order to make it match correctly, you have to flip it upside down on the ground or in the sky. That the Egyptians did place an importance on north and on south in the pyramid. And it doesn't make any sense to say, well, yes, they lined the stars up right, but then when it came to mapping on the ground, it was perfectly okay to flip everything around and make it upside down. The north shaft points toward one specific star. The one pointing north points to the pole star at the time, 2,000 years before Christ, 2,000 BC, 3,000 BC, and that pole star was Thuban. Thuban is located in the constellation Draco, or the dragon. Draco has 79 visible stars. Thuban has been replaced by our generation's pole star, Polaris. Polaris illuminates the Arctic, governing our sky as a beacon over the North Pole. Lying in the constellation Ursa Minor, it's 2,500 times brighter than the Sun. Outshining its companion stars, Polaris, A, B, and B. Although it's ruled the heavens as our North Star for as long as we can remember, its reign won't last forever. As Earth orbits the Sun, it teeters back and forth. This wobbling is called precession. If Earth was a perfect sphere, it wouldn't precess. But the gravitational poles of the Moon and Sun tug at the bulging equator, upsetting Earth's spin. Now the Earth is like a gyroscope or a spinning top. Notice that if I spin this very rapidly and then I move the axis, it points in the same direction. This is the Earth pointing toward Polaris, that as the Earth goes around the Sun, it always points in the same direction. However, precession is caused by gravitational interference, so the Earth begins to wobble. As Earth wobbles, its axis draws a circle in the sky. It takes 26,000 years to make one complete circle. The North Celestial Pole will move further and further away from the position of Polaris. In about 14,000 years from now, about halfway around its circle, it will be very close to the bright star Vega. But because Vega is so much brighter than any other star in that part of the sky, it will be a very significant north polar star. In 26,000 years, Earth's axis, centered on the North Pole, will make one complete circle and it will point back to where it is today. And Polaris will overthrow Vega and reclaim its title as our North Star. Taurus is one of the zodiac constellations that lie near the plane of the ecliptic. It's called the ecliptic plane because that's the only circle around the sky where eclipses can occur. The moon has to pass through the ecliptic, for example, in order to give us an eclipse of the sun. It's also the path that our Earth travels along as we orbit the Sun. Eight degrees above and below the ecliptic lies a region called the Zodiac. Every constellation that falls within this band is referred to as a Zodiac constellation. At any given time, the Sun is in a constellation of the Zodiac. The Sun lies between us on the Earth and a certain constellation. Because we orbit our sun, the sun appears to move through zodiac constellations that are fixed in the sky. During nighttime, the opposite portion of our sky is lit by the sun. Astrologers linked each of the 12 zodiac constellations to the month that the sun passes through. So in June, the sun sweeps through Cancer, and in July, it glides across Leo. You see, the night sky is a calendar. That was the very first scientific invention of us humans, the calendar in the sky.